Hello, guys. Welcome aboard. Another beautiful day here on Mother Earth. Lovely. So we're going to take a couple shots down here at 20 yards. Okay, today we're doing an experiment, and what we're doing is, I've taken this arrow, I stood beside a mirror, and I started pulling it back, and when I would see a bit, I would go to my saw and cut off a bit. I'd pull it back, if I saw a bit, I went to the saw, i cut it off. So I just kept cutting it off without measuring anything, and in the end, I've ended up with a 24 and 3 quarter inch arrow. That's how short it is, 24 and 3 quarter inch. And I'm still not pulling it off my hand. So that's the size of my drive. I've got it stretched out there and going like this, 24 and 3 quarters. So that's what we're going to experiment with today. 24 and 3 quarters, the arrow is 400 grains altogether. I have a 200 grain a field point on the end, and I have my 3 or 3 and a half inch feathers at the back. And uh, here we have a couple of shots. And you can see that if you can relax, get back so you can see it, but there's three right in the center. Okay? So that's what we're going to experiment with, if the 24 and 3 quarter inch arrow can be shot accurately. Looks like it can so far. Back in a minute. Okay guys, so we have a, uh, my favorite target I think it is down here. It's a nice spot in the shade. Okay, they're all a bit on the high side, but they're all together. It's a nice little group, just that I would have had to aim a little lower. The um, Something that I've kind of noticed is in all this controversy about uh, uh, shooting off the right or the left. You know, some people shoot off the right quite naturally. Some shoot off the left. Again, I prefer off the left side. But when I see people who think they have something special, you know, like like uh, only Asian people should be able to shoot Asian bows or uh, things like, I had one guy telling me that, you know, uh, uh, I was ruining everything trying to shoot a, a Turkish bow, I should go and learn how to, uh, about their culture first. Listen, I can shoot a Turkish bow off the left side if I want with a Mediterranean style. This is another thing I pointed out to this guy. If you go on YouTube, and type in the Mongol championships that they have every year, you will see that many of the Mongols actually shoot off the left side of the bow with a thumb ring. Not only that, but they will tie a little bit of tape around the end of their arrow so that they can tell exactly when it's touching their finger. Also, because the men always shoot at, uh, at 70 uh, yards, uh, 75 yards and the women at 60. Really, some of them actually use string walking. You'll see that their arrow is up there and they're pulling down here, the string walking. And then they can aim along the arrow. So they only do that if they're shooting 75 yards. But all this business about, you know, one way being superior and all this kind of stuff, it's nonsense. Anyhow, if you can hit the target, 
you're doing okay. And uh, you can see here, you know, they're on the high side of the of the kill zone, right? But they're all right there. And all I had to do was lower. I was I was putting my tip right about that area, okay. All I had to do was put my tip down about that area, and I would have been right in there. But anyhow, that's what's going on. Okay. Back in a minute. Okay, guys. I'll take another shot here. This time we'll lower the aim down to about his uh, about his knee. them up high a bit. Something's tricking me. Well, put the three in there anyhow. It's a little bit high. But uh, I'll tell you, this YouTube business is a little bit of a phony business in a way. You know, I was making some movies and shooting and uh, hardly anybody was looking at the movies. So I had my genes done, and I happened to find out that I'm 27% Scandinavian and 31% Anglo-Saxon. So that was enough for me. I thought, oh boy, I can play the Viking, <laughs> you know. I can go to Hastings, woo! Anyhow, uh, so what I did was I got a tunic. And as soon as I put the tunic on, the numbers of people watching me just skyrocketed. <gasps> This is what attracted them, you know, this tunic. Uh, and I have people asking about it. Listen, all you got to do is go on Amazon or eBay, get an oversized T-shirt, a T-shirt that's too big for you. And then all you have to do is go on the sewing area and you get some of this trim. And all you have to do is, uh, I got the, the, one of my tenants who, who has a... Uh, a laundry and she does sewing. I got her to, to, to sew it on for me, right? And uh, that's uh, how simple it is. Get an oversized t-shirt, put some trim on it, and everybody will love you. <laughs> or at least most people will. But uh, now I, I could have still should have kept that up a bit higher, but you can see that the groups are going right in there, you know. Okay, back in a minute. Okay, guys, same target. Sure is peaceful. Okay, that'll do. You know, sometimes I say that I don't use any kind of uh, back tension. And of course that's like, you know, taking the, the Lord's name in vain. Well, anyhow, listen, this is what I really do. I hold my arm out, okay? I hold my arm out. That gives me a consistent reach. Because if you're trying to push against 40 or 50 or 60 pounds, you won't always get it out the same way, but without pressure, it's going out there. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing is, when I draw, I draw back to here with a relaxed arm. Now, the point is that there is static archery and dynamic archery. Dynamic archery is like you would use on a horse. I can't ride a horse. But everything is moving on a horse, right? The guy's practiced by jumping up and down, you know, right? Good stuff. But I stand on the ground, and so I use a static 
style, a static release. I'm not moving around. It's just a choice. Anyhow, when I get it back, if my arm is truly back, watch, if my arm is really back, it, it won't go back any farther. My back is engaged, you know. Instead of doing this, I'm doing this, but it's still back. So it's not necessary to make these big movements if you're a static archer, right? Put it on, be consistent, press, release. Anyhow, if you do that stuff and you practice for a while, you know, you'll start getting your hits, okay? Back in a minute. Okay, guys. Here we have the, the cheating cheetah down here. It's uh, 20 paces. touch anything I'll just leave them just for a laugh yeah you know uh, something I'm finding now this shorter arrow you know how I've been always saying lately that you can shoot any arrow any bow and if your arrow goes off to the right you aim to the left well as I shorten this arrow and shorten this arrow for some reason I can aim the arrow right at the target it comes back far enough that I don't have it shoot off to the right or the left. It basically goes right on. And uh, one of the reasons is that my sight picture has changed. And if I, let's see if I can show you this. This is about how long my arrows used to be. Okay, this is the way they are now. Now if I put that on the bow and hold it up. Can you see, can you see that the, the upper arrow here is slightly more to, to your left compared to this point? You see how that point is slightly more to my right or your left? So that meant that the shorter, as the arrow comes back, it gets closer to the center. And for some reason, this one just happens to line up with it. So. I can just basically aim right on, but, um, you know, it's working pretty good. You know, they're bopping them right in there. Short arrow. And uh, also, yeah, let, let, me, let me talk to you one more time here. Let's see if this focuses. <laughs> i got to focus it back. So, these arrows are 400 grain, okay? And it seems to me that this is a very important thing. Because the arrow goes back, you know, if the arrow is away ahead of the bow and it bangs the side of the bow, it bends. Well, by the arrow being back here, it only bends as it goes in. It doesn't bend that way and then that way, and then that way. And because it's shorter, it probably doesn't go as far to the right and the left. You know, a weaker arrow could be going over there, and over there, and over there. A shorter, stiffer, a stiffer arrow is probably just going not as much parallax. And that's probably why it's getting a little better groups. Anyhow, so much for now. Talk to you later. that arm relaxed as you draw.
Okay, so anyhow, I left three in a group, and I, because I shot one a little, I took an extra shot. But anyhow, you know, this right hand is so important, I can't emphasize it enough. And I keep trying to des describe how to relax, but it's like in little waves, you know? Like, you can feel a little wave of relaxation, and a little more pressure goes on the finger, and a little other wave and another little wave and finally off she goes now um, it seems to me that I've fluked on to a good thing here because basically all I have to do is put the the you know what? I have to put the point on you see you can see the point is on right but the tail is over here and as I draw I just bring it here so it, it is a rotational draw at this point because the tip is on so I just come back and when it goes straight, I let go. How easy can that be? Anyhow, shortening that arrow really, really helped. And uh, this was just at, you know, 25 paces. But, you know, we put three in a little group, and I put one down a little left. So I just took an extra one. But it lines up really good, boys. Okay. Back in a minute. Well, here we are. Mother Nature providing. These are our wild raspberries. Beautiful, eh? And we've got them growing all around here. Mm hmm. Mother Nature. She's a grand old girl. <laughs> Back in a minute. 